Section 5 of the Aesop for Children. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Janet. The Aesop for Children by Aesop. The Lion and the Mouse. A lion lay asleep in the forest, his great head resting on his paws. A timid little mouse came upon him unexpectedly, and in her fright and haste to get away, ran across the lion's nose. Roused from his nap, the lion laid his huge paw angrily on the tiny creature to kill her. "'Spare me!' begged the poor mouse. Please let me go, and some day I will surely repay you." The lion was much amused to think that a mouse could ever help him, but he was generous and finally let the mouse go. Some days later, while stalking his prey in the forest, the lion was caught in the toils of a hunter's net. Unable to free himself, he filled the forest with his angry roaring. The mouse knew the voice and quickly found the lion struggling in the net. Running to one of the great ropes that bound him, she gnawed it until it parted, and soon the lion was free. You left when I said I would repay you, said the mouse. Now you see that even a mouse can help a lion. A kindness is never wasted. THE SHEPHERD BOY AND THE WOLF A shepherd boy tended his master's sheep near a dark forest not far from the village. Soon he found life in the pasture very dull. All he could do to amuse himself was to talk to his dog or play on his shepherd's pipe. One day, as he sat watching the sheep and the quiet forest, and thinking what he would do should he see a wolf, he thought of a plan to amuse himself. His master had told him to call for help should a wolf attack the flock, and the villagers would drive it away. So now, though he had not seen anything that even looked like a wolf, he ran toward the village, shouting at the top of his voice, Wolf! Wolf! As he expected, the villagers who heard the cry dropped their work and ran in great excitement to the pasture. But when they got there, they found the boy doubled up with laughter at the trick he had played on them. A few days later, the shepherd boy again shouted, Wolf! Wolf! Again, the villagers ran to help him, only to be laughed at again. Then, one evening, as the sun was setting behind the forest, and the shadows were creeping out over the pasture, a wolf really did spring from the underbrush and fall upon the sheep. In terror, the boy ran toward the village, shouting, Wolf! Wolf! But, Though the villagers heard the cry, they did not run to help him as they had before. He cannot fool us again, they said. The wolf killed a great many of the boy's sheep and then slipped away into the forest. Liars are not believed even when they speak the truth. The Gnat and the Bull a gnat flew over the meadow with much buzzing for so small a creature and settled on the tip of one of the horns of a bull. After he had rested a short time, he made ready to fly away. But before he left, he begged the bull's pardon for having used his horn for a resting place. You must be very glad to have me go now, he said. It's all the same to me, replied the bull. 
I did not even know you were there. We are often of greater importance in our own eyes than in the eyes of our neighbor. The smaller the mind, the greater the conceit. The Plane Tree Two travelers, walking in the noonday sun, sought the shade of a wide-spreading tree to rest. As they lay looking up among the pleasant leaves, they saw that it was a plane tree. How useless is the plane, said one of them. It bears no fruit whatever and only serves to litter the ground with leaves. Ungrateful creatures, said a voice from the plane tree. You lie here in my cooling shade, and yet you say I am useless. Thus, ungratefully, O Jupiter, do men receive their blessings. Our best blessings are often the least appreciated. End of Section 5 Recording by Janet, Marysville, Washington